interesting here is if you're on YouTube Live, I think I'm on YouTube Live too. So let's see. Um, supposedly I'm on Periscope too. <laughs> I know, going for the gusto people. Um, and let's really go for it today and see if I can add the chat. And so I can see the chat at the same time. Supposedly, I should be able to. And according to this, I am live on YouTube. Woohoo! Okay. We're almost ready to start. Um, we're testing out the system. I'm here with Andy and just going through some last minute things, making sure I have everything to get ready for the project today. If anybody is out there listening so far, no, no one. <laughs> that I know of anyway. So if you're lurking out there, do say hi, let us know where you're, where you're from, because the statistics are very interesting, but it seems that I'm reaching something like 15 countries out there. So it's pretty cool. Excited to um, see that there's people from all over the world watching. Um, so, if Facebook is a little blurry, it could be your connection because we're showing that everything is a go here. Okay. Sorry. I don't know who said that. Okay. So I'm going to move my little chat over here so I can see who's there. Hey, Marcy. Okay. So if you're commenting on Facebook, just to let you know, the only thing we can do right now is like your like your comment. Um, Andy's relaying all the information to me. He can't uh, chat and comment with you, nor, nor am I. Um, so it's really sort of tough on this side. So um, anyway, if, um, if you're having a problem with, um, with Facebook being really fuzzy, you might want to switch over to Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash QFOM Gray to find my channel, or you can even just search for my name in the, the Twitch um, website or on the app. I haven't used the app, so I really can't tell you much about it. So uh, we'll sort of go from there. But we're going to start for sure in six minutes because it's 12.54. We've been testing out the um, technology because it seems like for the last 10 days, let me think about this, the last four sessions, things have sort of been weird. <laughs> feel like every time I turn around something's changed or updated or different but um, so we thought that we should at least do our due diligence and test our technology make sure that um, we're doing a good job on this side anyway that's 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 the goal that is the goal and uh, see how we can make sure that we're doing much better so hello Valley Forge We've got Florida, we've got Virginia, we've got P Pennsylvania. This is pretty cool. Can't wait to see where the other, <laughs> those other countries are coming in. You know, sooner or later, one of those countries are going to chime in and tell me, hey, it's Lithuania. Anyway, so while we're hanging out, um, if you were on Twitch yesterday, you would have seen that I finished the sparklet earrings. So there we are. That's going to be for the end of um, end of the month because I thought it'd be fun to have it for um, Fourth of July, right? Okay, you know what? I'm going to move you over here just a little bit, slightly off. Okay. So those are the sparkler earrings. Still haven't completely decided what I'm doing with the enamel, but playing around with that just a little bit. Let's see. So lots of fun things. Finish these up. This is the saddest uh, pendant coming up in what? Let me think about that. Next week. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is next Monday. <laughs> That's next Monday. And then the loopy bracelet. Simple. Classic, apparently. Little did I know. Um, but this is originally called the, the heart uh, link. So, so there's that, and but I'm so excited about this one. This is going to be the satellite pendant. We named it yesterday on Twitch together. Oops, let's see. There we are. Whoa. 
I'm so excited about this. I don't know why. It makes me happy. This 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 little thing. I don't know. It's dimensional, like so, but it makes me so happy. Maybe because it started out in my little brain and then it actually came to fruition and it wasn't like this huge struggle to figure out how to make it happen. So that's pretty exciting stuff. So so we have like both ends of Pennsylvania on here. I see Pittsburgh's on, Valley Forge is on, so you're on the other end. So a little bit from everywhere. Yes, celestial is what we decided to call this pendant because we thought, because it sort of looks like, a, you know, planets and things moving around, right? Maybe we should should have called it Dragon for the space flight this week. Did anybody see that? That's pretty cool stuff. You know, all the technology. Where have we come in 10 years? It's pretty darn amazing. But heck, where have I come in 10 years? Things have totally changed. No more Beats doors. Yes, doors, I had two. And um, what else has happened? No grandchildren, no extra children. Still married to the same guy 10 years later. Actually, we're coming on our 20th anniversary this year. Woohoo! So that's uh, that's what's happened in ten years. But wow. So, yeah, it's um, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. So, um, so while we're hanging out talking, I've discovered that I sort of screwed up. <laughs> My planning's a little off, and I posted a Zoom for the filigree between the lines for next week. You know what? There's no chance we're gonna make that that schedule. So I'm gonna push it by one week. And I'm going to post um, probably tonight, I'm going to post the um, registration for that. So I decided, well, what are, you, what are you going to do next Friday if we don't have any plans, right? So I am going to post a free Zoom. So for all those people who have not Zoomed before, this is a really great opportunity to screw around with it and not have to pay for anything. It's going to be um, just something easy, something fun. Uh, how about enameled ball pins? Pretty straightforward, really, really easy. Haven't figured out the project yet. I'll sit down tomorrow in my day off <laughs> and figure out uh, what the project will be. But it'll be a lot of, you know, I, I think it'll be fun, especially for people who haven't Zoomed with me um, to jump in and see what that's about. So it'll be 1.30 next week, we'll do enameled ball pins and I'll figure out a project. Everybody should already have a lot of the, um, the material if you don't have enamel you can pick up an ounce or so you don't even have to buy a whole kit just pick out a couple of your favorite colors and and put it in order um through their beater we'll get that to you by next week easily because we have all the enamel in stock but you, all you need is some copper wire and um like let's see 22 gauge copper wire and enamel again i'll figure out the project but at the very least you'll have really pretty little head pins to play with. Oh, if you don't want to do copper, you could definitely do silver too, and that'll work. Okay, so I'll bring that up again later. It looks like it's one o'clock. Andy, you ready to do this? Okay, so we're ready to do this. Okay, hi everybody. It is Monday, beautiful day outside, so excited. It is week 11 and we are, this is Minimal Metal Monday um, and we're doing the Quadratum. If you're new here, um, it is based on my book, Minimal Metal Jewelry, where everything inside are projects that is all 16 gauge or 18 gauge wire with some jump rings and solder. So all these projects, um, it's a um, is complimentary to the book. So if you haven't gotten the book yet, you still can. Information about this segment is going to be um, posted after we're done recording on the description on the QTalk page and the description of Twitch. And then at some point, it'll go on YouTube also. So some pretty uh, interesting things going on today. Um, we work, looks like all the technology is working. Yay! And um, I think if I'm right, I'm currently also uh, live on YouTube and I'm live on Periscope. I know, what the heck is Periscope, right? I got y'all twitching, but now what's Periscope? What's crazy is Periscope's been out there for like six years. It is an extension of, of, twi of Twitter, right? It was the, it is the video portion of Twitter. Well, somebody asked me yesterday, why all the platforms? 
you know what? It's about spreading the, the <laughs> spreading as far and wide as you can to find the widest audience that you possibly can because this is about it. You know, I don't think I'm gonna come up with anything that's gonna go viral anytime soon, except maybe if I torch myself. But we're not doing that anyway. So, um, so that's why all of the um, all of the platforms. But sort of excited. So we'll see whether or not you know my my programming over here tells me I'm connected to all these platforms. I don't know. I, I'll find out afterwards if it actually worked. It's always a big surprise around here. Um, anyway, so the other thing that I've added, um, you might have seen this on the QTalk Facebook page. By the way, if you're not on Facebook, that's okay because all my pages are public. You can still hop on and you don't have to have an account to see all the posts that I have up there. Um, so one of the other things you may have noticed, I've decided to um, open up for private sessions. So I've had a lot of requests for very, very specific projects that I'm not prepared to do publicly because I'm still teaching them at shows and at events, at least when they come back. And so um, if you want to do it privately, I'd be happy to do it do that for you. And we're I'm doing a special until June 10th. It is on the website. Um, to schedule I, to buy sessions right now for $65 an hour as opposed to what it will be after June 10th is $75 an hour and you can buy as many hours as you want you don't have to use it all in one day or all in a week but you'll have to the end of the year to um, to use up your sessions and they are in two hour increments that will do the session. So if you're interested in doing something private like stone drilling you know drilling rocks or things like that that I just you know, I'm not doing here um, for free or even on Zoom. We can definitely do it for private and it will save you the cost of coming out to a show and flying across the country to learn something. So I don't know, might be worth your time, um, might be fun. We'll see about that. OK, um, anyway, so uh, as as always, we ask that you um, can show us a little support by sharing, sharing, sharing. OK, it would be really great to continue to do this. I know some of you have been really kind by buying all the downloads that have been offered. If you can't buy the downloads, if you could do us a favor and just share our posts, it would be, it, it's one way that we can continue to do what we're doing. All right, I've said enough. Let's get going, okay? So let's go over, um, oh, so what are we making? We are making this today, okay? And uh, again, the links for everything that I'm showing will co will be posted after I'm done in Twitch and in um, Facebook and at some point in YouTube. Um, so YouTube usually for me takes lags a few days, if not a week. I just posted last week's today. Um, OK, so we're making the quadratum uh, bracelet. What does it mean? It's Latin for square because we are making these square links in here. OK, so you'll need 16 gauge wire for the bars across and then you will need um, 18 gauge wire for the twisted squares. And that's it. You can do this in all silver, all copper, brass if you want to, whatever. It, it all works. You can even use fine silver if you want to, but I prefer to use sterling silver. It's a little bit more. Um, the metal is a little harder, a little bit more stable, and will keep the shape better. But we are using 16 gauge, so it's a bit heavy. Okay, you don't even need jump rings for this one. All right, so that's the material that we need uh, for for the tools. Here we go. You need some multi looping pliers. Will make your life a lot easier. However, you can use round nose pliers. Whatever. Uh, definitely need a heavy duty cutter because uh, we're cutting through. Once you, you twist the 18 gauge wire, it's going to get really heavy. So you don't want to break those really nice um, Lindstrom's that you have. So you'll also need a flush cutter would be nice too today. So you want a heavy duty cutter. OK, and I'm I'm putting my tools away as we are talking here so that I can be nice and neat about the work. OK, so then you'll need a bow opening plier. Again, this is sort of optional, but it's a great tool. And I think a lot of you have discovered this since we started doing this. We have. I think every no one knew what a bow opening plier was until we started doing this. But what this does is when you squeeze it, it opens instead of closing. So like usually with a pair of pliers, when you squeeze it, it closes, right? So it's the opposite action. And it just makes life a lot easier. If you don't have these, of course, what you can do is you can just put it in some pliers and pull it open to stretch something open, OK? You'll need some sort of a square um, device, 
Okay, so here I have a square AccuLoop plier. It will make my life a lot easier. Or you can have some sort of a square mandrel is also really helpful because we're going to make these square. Now, yes, you can do it without these pliers. It's going to be a little bit harder to keep it consistent. And the point is that you really, um, we're, we're making a chain and the the challenge of chain making is always about consistency. That's another reason why I like chain making, especially for beginners, is because it requires you to do repetitive motion, which means at some point, you know, it all kick in, it creates muscle memory, and life just becomes a lot easier. Okay, so chain making is a good skill builder. You will need, you will need um, also a wire twister of some sort. Okay, so you can have something like this, or you can have a flex shaft. I forgot to take my tip off. Um, so, or you can do it by hand or with a drill. That also works. So, something to twist wire with. Okay, you will need a bench block, two would be better, and a um, leather mallet. And I'm using the little one because I'm making little links today. And then a chasing hammer is optional. Okay, and if you don't have a um, two bench blocks, we are going to be straightening some wire today. You can use a nylon nose uh, plier. So all of these tools are available on our website. Um, so you can go to the urbanbeater.com to um, order any of these tools. The only thing we don't have are things like dowel rods. You can buy this at the hardware store or even at any of your local craft stores. So we also need a, um, 3 8 inch wooden dowel rod. Again, if you don't have a dowel rod, what will also work is you can use a, um, a bezel mandrel, okay? Or go find something like, let's see if I have anything here. Oh yeah, okay. So, you know, anything round that's cylindrical will work. Hey, check that out. This, the uh, fine tip Sharpie is pretty darn close. That would work. So if you don't have a dowel rod, fine tip Sharpie. Don't know why I didn't know that before, but it works. So find a marker or whatever. Okay, so I'm all about using what you have. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the clasp, okay? So the clasp is really straightforward. It is just a hook. I think you can see that, see? There we go. So I'll make the clasp first, okay? So I'm gonna cut three pieces of wire and I'm going to work in uh, copper today because I've already made my sample in silver. I, I don't need another silver one you know, costly. So I'm going to cut the um, wires here in one and a quarter inch pieces. No, I'm sorry, one and a half inch is what I'm doing. Take it back. So one, two, three. It doesn't have to be exact. Close is good enough because we could always trim it back. Um, the smaller you cut your wire, the smaller the clasp. And we're going to solder all these together. And to get them to solder together well, you want to straighten them. So to straighten it, my easiest way to do it is to put it between two bench blocks and spurt roll away. Look at that. See, look, they're all close together. Do it again, just to make sure. Okay, set that aside and then let's solder. Okay, so put this on, get some glasses on, maybe I can see what's going on. So if anybody's watching out there, do, do say hi so we know where you're from and that you're out there watching. Don't just be a lurker, participate. <laughs> okay, so, so here I'm going to just take a little bit of, um, a little bit of copper solder you will use hard solder if you're doing um, silver, okay? And I'm just gonna put some in three spots down the wire. Actually, I'll move this over, you can see what I'm doing. So just a bit of solder right there. And then solder on the next one. I don't spread this like peanut butter. 
I don't find a need to. Um, and it gets really sloppy if you just put spread it all over the place. So you might just put little dabs because the solder really should just run. Okay. Okay, there we are. And bring this back over. So you only need to put it on two pieces. Like so. And then the other one. And make sure that you bring them really nice and tight together. I'm using my tools to do that. And then I'm going to push the wires down so that they're even. You don't have to, but it's nice. You know, you're saving a little bit of wire, right? So move it up here. All right. So we're just going to heat this gently up and down. Torch always in your less dominant hand, tool in your dominant hand. And I've got a pair of fire tweezers on me just in case they decide to go rolling. And there, the solder is starting to move. Make sure it goes all the way to the end. This one needs a little bit of help over here. There we are. Oops. Let's spread that apart. There we go. A little more. Duh. Okay. Give that a second because it's copper and it needs a moment to set. Instead of picking it up right away, we'll quench it. And I'll show you how to make the clasp. There we go. Forgot my rag, hold on. Okay. All right, so here, what we're going to do is you're gonna take out those heavy duty side cutters and cut the end. Make sure when you're cutting, by the way, that you're pointing down or in your hand so that this piece of wire doesn't go flying, okay? So, take out your file. Oh, I forgot, you need a file. And file the end so it's nice and even. Take off any sharp edges, like so. As always, I like to give it a little bit of a bevel seems to take off those sharp edges. So what, what that means is I'm coming at an angle to the wire. It's just sort of a couple strokes down like so. Okay. And if you still have some uh, sharp edges, take out some 400 sandpaper and sand it as you need it. And it also gives it a nice finish. It takes off those file marks. Not that anybody's ever going to see it, but it's my thing. Okay. Um, then you'll take out your multi-looping plier. Okay. And in the smallest part, of the loop. This is going to be something like three millimeters. Yeah. I'm going to make a bend. Bend, 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 bend. Turn it all the way around. And this wire should be really nice and soft at this point because we've been heating it, so it's annealed. If it is not, just anneal it some more. I'm going to go up here and finish up the bend. You see that? I think you can see that. Okay. And I'm going to go right to that back side. Do you see where the loop is? And I'm gonna bend it out just a little bit, so that it just isn't like a, a so it's not like a sleigh, right? It makes for a nicer loop. There we go. And then on this side, I'm going to estimate it. I'm using the second to the largest um, section of the multi-looping plier, and I'm going to bend it over. So this is simply a hook. Okay, and notice I'm adjusting because I know that my aim was off and I'm gonna to come too close to the end over here. And if I come too close, there's not gonna be enough room for this to slide, for, for the, um, the loop to slide over. But that's it, there's my clasp. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Actually, I'm gonna throw it in the pickle and then we're gonna move on. So next up, you're going to make um, the, I'm going to call them dumbbells. Can you see that? They look like little dumbbells. So I'm going to make these crossbars using 16 gauge wire. Okay. I'm just going to wrap it around my 3 8 mandrel. And how many you need depends on how long your, um, 
your bracelet's going to be. But it's going to be somewhere between 21 to 24 um, pieces because we're doing three in each one of these, right? So, but you don't have to. You can do one or you can do two, whatever. Okay, and you know what's fun about this is you can also use square wire if you wanted to. You can also use half round wire if you wanted to. Um, so I always go one extra loop from what I'm aiming for, but I'm not going to make that many. See, I should make one, two, three, four. I'm going to make six, I think. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to take out my cutters and we're just going to make jump rings. Just right down the line. Okay, there we are. Set that aside. Okay, so the thing is, my cutters are not double flush. Therefore, one side always has a burr. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to take off that burr by cutting. You can take off that burr by um, filing also. Whatever works for you. Okay, and but you do want to make sure that you create a surface where when you put the jump rings together, it's going to be nice and flush. Request to see the bracelet on my other arm. This is the class called Fancy Connections. It's also it's on my QFOMGray.com site. Um, it's really heavy, like really heavy. I think I used 12 gauge wire on that. Okay, so now I'm gonna work all these jump rings together to make sure that you have a really nice connection there. There we are. Because remember, we're gonna stretch these out and make them oval. So why do we start round to create an oval? Because most of you don't have an oval mandrel. Let's be honest. I don't have an oval mandrel this big. No way. My oval mandrel is actually really small. So I'll show you. This is how small my oval mandrels are. And it goes down to teeny weeny. And this is for um, bezel, making a, an oval bezel. So, so this is the easiest way to get there. Okay. And I'm just working these jump rings together by pushing it beyond itself and pulling it back so it finds tension like that. I'm not worried about shape because I can always reshape after and besides I'm making these into ovals anyway. Okay there we are. And this one is a little funky. I'm going to need some pliers to fix that. There. Okay. Just like so. And notice, here's my trick. Do you see how there is sort of a, a pitch there, like going this way. I'm going to put it in some um, chain nose pliers and squeeze in. Look at that. It brings it in perfectly. OK. So then we're going to solder all these pieces together. See, I know I'm going to stretch this so much that if I don't have a great joint, it's going to break. So make sure you get those together. And by the way, if it breaks, it's not a big deal. Just um, pickle it. Make sure it's nice and clean and soldered again. You might need to add a little extra solder um, if you are soldering it again. Uh, it's called Fancy Connections. You know what? I might have retired it if you're looking for it on the website. So look on the retired page. But the other thing, too, it's a slightly different version is what I did. Um, so on the version that I have online has, instead of plain ones, it's actually beaded wire instead of a plain jump ring like that. Why? Because when I went to make this bracelet, um, it was so hard to bend these jump rings in 12 gauge wire. I was like, oh, the students are, there's gonna be a revolt if I put it into a class. I could just already see this exodus of students. And um, I know that there's several of you out there who who did the bracelet with the bead wire. You know how hard that was already. So can you imagine if I actually did it with a uh, 12 gauge wire? Yeah, there would have been a lot of crying. Mm -hmm. Or at least hair being, gnawing and gnashing. 
<laughs> there would have been a lot of gnawing and gnashing. So I'm just making sure that all my jump rings are together and I am adding, um, I'm adding solder to each one. On production lining, I'm going to do all of them all at once, okay? So, here we are. Does it matter if the solder is on the inside or on the outside? Not for this one in particular. I usually go on the inside for the most part. And I know this one's a little weak. So, there we are. All right, let's solder these together. So, just heat it like so. Make sure you have a pair of fire tweezers in your hand and just heat it. Make sure that it comes all the way through the joint. My quench bowl is on the side if you're wondering where I'm going with that. My, um, my pickle pot is also on the side here. It is not through the magic of the internet that this is happening. Okay. And again, you're just heating it and you're waiting and watching to see, you know, we're using um, solder paste. So then it's going to look like sand and then it'll flow and look like liquid metal. And that's what you're looking for when you're soldering. If it still looks like grains and you're using um, solder paste, it hasn't flowed. You have to make sure that it has flowed. Okay. Again, you're looking for it to look like liquid silver. Okay. Let's pull these out. And I'm not going to pickle right now. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step so uh, we don't have to wait for it to pickle. It can pickle while we do the, um, the twisting of the wire. Okay. So, yes, hard solder um, on this first step. And actually, you could get away with medium solder if you want, okay? So I'm gonna put it right here into my um, bow opening pliers, and I'm gonna stretch it, but I'm not gonna stretch it so far that I'm breaking my joints, okay? Some of you, it'll break anyway just because you didn't solder correctly or didn't get the joint together, that's okay. So for people who are joining in right now, I am using 16 gauge wire. By the way, you can go to 14 gauge wire if you want something a little bit more bold, or you can even go to um, you can go to uh, square wire. It'll be a, a different look because a little more contemporary. Now, something I've noticed too that when I do this, when I'm stretching out rings like this, it's better to stretch it on the ends. I know, I. I literally just figured that out this week. Instead of having it in the middle, it has a tendency to break a little bit more easily in the middle. So I, I guess I haven't stretched that many rings that I didn't know that. Okay, so I'm just stretching them out like so. And then I'm going to pull out my chain nose pliers again. And guess what I figured out this week? Actually, literally today, I don't have any flat nose pliers. I've given them all away. It was really weird. Anyway, so flat nose pliers, I think, would do a better job here. Again, looks like I gave away all my flat nose pliers. So I'm going to use chain nose, and I'm going to gently come in. Can you see that? And, oops, squeeze. So, yes, the solder joint is at the end. Actually, I'm going to help myself here. I'm going to squeeze this in with my hands. And squeeze down like so. You see that? So I'm basically making a dumbbell is what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm going to work. So if you notice the middle isn't real, it's just pinched in the middle. I don't know. Can you see it? There we go. I should have tried it again. So it's just pinched in the middle. But I really want it to be flat in the middle to look much more like a dumbbell than, shall we say, a dog bone. Okay. So I'm going to put this back in. And I'm going to squeeze it right up to the pliers. You see that? So it's now really tight there in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. 
it's it's just a design preference it's all I'm doing here okay there you have it all right repeat 22 times I'm only gonna repeat five times here so I'll work through this really quickly right down like so and the thing is here too that you need to be careful of is and honestly I wasn't too careful the first time I was doing it. I was just like oh look I can just do it and I didn't think much about it is if you're not really careful about squeezing that middle part you're going to mar the wire and you can have all these little dinks and dents I sat here and sanded out <laughs> all of these Oh yeah, it wasn't pretty. But I had to sit here and sand out all these links because you know what's sort of crazy too is when I go to take a picture of these things, you will see every single one of my flaws. Um, all those scratches and dents and things like that, they all show up. So, um, so yeah, be real careful of how you're doing it. I'm being so much more careful this time. I'm pretty pleased with myself. Okay. That one's not great, but I'm going to show you how to fix it here in a second. And again, squeeze it right up there. I'm sorry, Andy, what did you say? Okay. Okie dokie, last one. Here we are. Okay. So here, which is the one I didn't like, this one, it sort of has a curve up like this. Let's just bend it down. Again, if you're going to play with these, be really careful that your your pliers are going to mar your wire. So just be careful of that that you don't get too cray cray about it. Um, you know, another thing too, if you're finding that your pliers are really marring all your wire, what you can do, especially if you have inexpensive ones, take out some 400 grit sandpaper and sand it, literally. Did you see how it came up shiny? Oh, you know, I should have done this before. Anyway, <laughs> so you, want, you can sand it and put a slight bevel into it. And this will actually eliminate a lot of marring when you're doing like chain mail and things like that. So there's a quick tip for you. I know. Sorry. Can I wrap my jaws? Okay, I, I'm lost on the question. I'm so sorry. Oh, yes, to reduce marring is the question. Yes, uh, can you wrap something around the, the pliers to reduce marring? Yes, you can also dip it in, um, is it called tool dip? You can find it at the hardware store. You know the stuff, the rubber stuff, uh, latex stuff that they put their tools into it? You know, you can totally um, dip it in there. That would work very, very well. You know, it's sort of interesting. I think I have some around here. Um, Tool magic, right? Tool magic, right, honey? Was that what it was called? I think it was called tool magic or magic tool. Uh, yeah, it's still around if I understand it correctly. But again, you can buy it at the hardware store. That's something else. Okay, so here we have all of our dumbbells. I am going to stick all my dumbbells into the pickle and let's do a little bit of twisting of wire. So I just have a piece of, I don't know, oh, 12. Uh, 12 inches of 18 gauge wire and I'm going to twist this um, but to make twisting a lot easier I'm going to anneal it if you're doing silver you definitely need to anneal this to make your life a lot easier okay so I'm just going to anneal it by heating and because my piece is so long you want to make sure that you have a quench bowl on the side that will accommodate the size of your twist now I'm sort of using a smaller piece because um, of camera position, but if I were you, I'd cut an 18 inch piece of wire and just get the twisting done instead of piecemealing it. And then you're gonna have a lot less waste. I would do it as long as I possibly can because you'll have a lot less waste if you do that. Okay, so here 
I've annealed the wire. What's annealing? Annealing is the process of um, heating metal to open up the molecules to make it more malleable. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use a flex shaft to do this. For me, it's the easiest thing to do. Another problem I have too right now is that if I use the wire twister, it's so hard to show on camera because of how how much space it takes, and that's part of it. Oh, but you know, I will also show you very quickly how to do this by hand if you don't have the tools. I would use my parallel pliers on one end, like so, and then on the other end, pull out some sort of a mandrel, let's see, like so, and start twisting. You can also put this into um, a drill if you don't have or don't want to do any of these things. A drill or a flex shaft is going to give you, or a wire twister is going to give you the most consistent twist than doing it by hand. Trust me, I know. So, okay. I'll show you how to use a wire twister after I do this, okay? So I'm gonna put this in, like so, into the collet here. And I'm just going to keep twisting until it's really nice and tight. And remember, always go into two positions. So notice I'm going into a second position here. Okay, there it is. And make sure you put on some safety goggles because trust me, if your wire um, goes gets loose, you're sort of screwed. Uh, it's it's not it's not pretty. I've had it happen. First time I tried twisting. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right in here and hold it. And see that? And you want a really nice tight twist, like so. Okay. And the reason why you want a tight twist is because when you go to make those rings, it has a tendency to pull apart. Okay. So there you go. Hold on to the other end, and that's how you have that. Okay, that said, let me do it. Let me show you real quick how to set up your um, wire twister if you have a wire twister. And cut a little bit of wire. Again, you want to kneel it just the same. Makes life a lot easier. If you have dead soft wire, that's great. Go ahead and use it. You don't have to kneel. So you'll fold your wire in half again. Okay, so this is the uh, wire twister. You can see here there's a um, loop. Um, what am I thinking? It's not a loop. It's a catch. There's your catch, and it goes inside of here. And once you it goes down here, you squeeze it really hard. You push this down, and it'll catch it, right? And that will hold the pliers together. Squeeze to open. Okay, so again, we're gonna put the wires into the head here, like so, the open end, not the closed end. And you're gonna squeeze this in and push that down and it'll lock it in place. And then what you do is you need something to hold this side. Um, again, it's a little hard here for me to do it because there's not enough space, okay? But you have somebody holding the other side and you pull on the knob and this device will twist. But that's basically how you do it. Oh, and to open it again, squeeze, it pops up, done. All right, that's what a wire twister does. And it's really nice because it's not mechanical and it's inexpensive and it gets you to the point. Okay, so now that we have the twist, I'm going to go ahead and anneal this one more time because it has also work hardened my piece, right? I'm not gonna bother, you know me, I'm not gonna bother pickling this. Because why? I'm gonna have to pickle this like another two or three times anyway. So annealing, you're just gonna heat it till it starts changing colors. There it is. And gets a nice quench on the side over here. And again, you wanna make sure that you have a bowl that's big enough for your, um, for your wire. All right, dry that off. Next up, okay, so now we're going to make the um, jump ring. So I'm just gonna cut this end off. 
So this is, you see, this is the waste of the wire right here. And this is why I don't like to waste. So um, this is why I would suggest making as much of the longest twist that you can, then you don't have to, um, you don't have as much waste because you only have to cut that off once, okay? So here, I'm gonna put the end inside and I'm at about seven and a half, okay? You can make this larger um, if you want, but I definitely would make it smaller. And I'm just going to bend this right over. You see that? Let's see if you can see that. And you see how it's not as tight as it can be. This is where I pull out my mallet and I help it. I'm gonna switch that up a little bit. There you go. And there we go, okay? And it makes it really nice and tight. We're gonna go this way. Oh, it bent just fine for me on this one and bend it around again. So how do you bend that last part? Well, actually I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna pull this out and put it on the outside. Do you see that? And put it back to where you the position that you had it. So now the opening is on the outside. And I'm going to bend it just by crisscrossing it just a little bit. You see? You see that? It's crisscrossed on the outside. And here again just help it by pushing it down and it makes it really nice and square. I prefer when I do this to have the ends on the side because you know if you do it on the corner then one corner is going to be off. It's not going to look like all the other corners and you want this to be as consistent as possible. So then I'm going to cut it again. I'm going to cut it slightly bigger because I know that I have some beveled ends and they need to be file. So notice I'm twisting it to the side and I'm pulling out my needle file and I'm going to um, file the ends just like so to prepare it for soldering because you want a really nice flat end for soldering. Okay. Yep. So now I'll check for size, it's good. And I'm also checking the joint to make sure that it's together really, really nice, okay? Pull it aside. I'm going to grab my dumbbells out of the uh, pickle. Give me a second here. You see, this is why we weren't doing it earlier because you wouldn't have to wait. So if you're following along, we've used 16 gauge wire and then we used 18 gauge wire. You can use a, uh, the 16 gauge on the square, uh, the square loops or rings if you want to, but just remember, if you do decide to go heavier on the, um, on the squares here, actually I'm gonna throw this in pickle too right now while we try that. So if you want to make um, the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the twist with 18, 16 gauge wire, you have to make these loops bigger or else it won't fit inside, okay? So just remember that. Anytime you make changes to the wire size, you have to make changes to the ring sizes so that there's some um, room for it to move through. And actually, I need to make at least one more square for this demo. Okay, so doing it again, I'm gonna put it the, oh, the end right inside at about seven and a half. I'll bend it down. Give it a little tap, bend it over. It's nice to be able to tap on, right onto the pliers. Open it up, put the opening on the outside again, and then we're going to overlap it Okay, like so. So the question, uh, looks like somebody has a question, how is twisted wire measured and is twisted, I, and is it doubled? 
Okay, if you're buying twisted wire, it should all be the same. Gauge is gauge is gauge. So if you buy 18 gauge twisted wire, it should be the same as 18 gauge plain wire. But if you're doing it on your own, yes, this measurement is going to increase because we have two pieces of wire on top of itself, right? So, and actually, you know, I don't know the exact measurement. Let's measure it when I'm done. Andy, you'll remind me of that? Okay, so we'll measure it just to know. I don't have an answer to that question. So I'm taking off the bevel again, and then I'm going to just file like so. Okay. Oops, it's a little bit big that end, so I'm going to file a little bit more. Just to take down the size. Yes, I'm being a little anal retentive. I know I should stop. Okay, so there we are. That works. I'm going to grab the other one out of the pickle while I throw this one in. And we're going to start building it. All right, so I'm going to put the clasp on. It doesn't want to go on. So I have to bend this out just a little bit here. Um, I'm going to bend this out to get my clasp on. Wow, you're going to fight me today. There we are. And then bend this back. Make sure we're nice and square again. Pull this out. And we're going to go ahead and add our rings on. I'm going to add three rings. Oh, missed a step. Sorry. Okay. If you want to have the rings butt up a little bit nicer, I did not do it on mine, but you can do it on yours. Thought I'd share this one is you can hammer it. Just put on a bench block and flatten it just a little bit. And it takes those round edges down. Okay. And again, you can see here, I'm a little wonky. So just fix it. It's not a big deal. Whatever makes you happy. Since we're all working at home and not in a classroom, you can have your anal retentiveness and privacy. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to add these on. One, two, three. If your um, your joints are not pretty or dirty or whatever, do go ahead and sand it, okay, before you put it on here to clean it up, all right? If I was doing this, um, I would do all of my rings and my dumbbells all at the same time, and I'd lay them out and match them all up. I'm not perfect, so sometimes they're off. Uh, looks like these are the same, but I know that these three, one of them slightly off, but you know, to match them up and then they'll lay better. Okay, that's another tip. All right, we're going to move this together like so, and then we're going to solder this. All right, so you want this as close as possible, and pull out your fire tweezers like so, a little bit of solder. And you'll go to either medium or easy solder at this point if you're doing silver. If you're doing copper, we're just going to put the copper solder on because remember, copper solder self levels. All right, here we are. And I'm putting it on the back side and I'm going to torch from the front. Nope. Okay. Okay, right there. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, I do use um, wire and the question was, do I use anything but paste solder? I do use wire and chip from time to time, but for projects like this, I just love paste because it works so well. Okay, so heating it right at the blue tip. I'll do it one more time here in a second. And look at that, it stayed. Okay, so we're going to pull the other one out.
like so. And we'll add a couple more jump rings. Now, before I forget, remember, you want to end your bracelet with a ring because this is going to become the catch. And I'll take mine off here in a minute and show you see. So the square becomes the catch. Um, so you want to make sure that you end with a, a ring. Okay, so we'll put that on and then we'll put the next three on. So basically every, except for the last one, every uh, square ring has six loops in it. Don't forget that. I know, and don't be distracted because trust me, when we get distracted, we forget to add the loops on, we solder and go, oh, oops. I know, we've all done it. All right, so we're gonna hold it like so. And then add a little bit of solder there. Okay. Again, I like to put it on the back side and pull it through. The trick here is also because it's twisted wire, you don't want to overheat this. What's going to happen is the solder is going to flow through the twist and get away from your, um, your joint. So that's also a little bit challenging. Okay, so we'll go ahead and solder this just like that. Bring in the blue tip, bring it right in there. And if it's silver, give it a slight heat around, but we're using copper, so we just put it right there. And there it is. Flowed right through. All right, quench it, pickle it. Patina is sort of up to you if you want to patina this or not. Um, it's sort of a, you know, a personal preference. All right, so let me take this bracelet apart and I'll show you. It's a, it is like a hair small for me, just a hair. But I usually like my, my bracelets pretty tight because I don't like it dangling, especially if I'm working. There it is. Okay, so you see that? So this is the hook. It goes right on like so. And you want to make sure that there's just enough space to get over, but not enough to pull out. Because this one is a little tight for me, I'm okay with that extra bit of gap that I have in there. But if it's loose, I would close up that gap so that it's not so free to come apart. Okay, and I'll show you that again here after I pull this out. Okay, here we are. Okay, so here, just use this as a sample. You want just enough to pull in. So I'm, you see how much closer the gap is on this one than it is on mine? You see the gap is two very different things. Maybe you can't see by reflection, there we go. Okay, so still a little bit too uh, small. I'm just going to, actually I'm gonna pull it back. I'm not gonna nip it, I'm gonna pull it back. So I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit, teeny weeny bit, and you wanna just keep checking it to see, oh, there it is. But see, it's not so easy to come out. It's not so easy to come in, okay? And that way you'll ensure that um, it doesn't fall apart on you, okay? So that's how you make your clasp. Now, if you were looking or paying attention, I also flattened my squares. I like the look, I like flattened twists, but I elected not to do it until it was on here. And here's why. Unless you solder that entire twist, when you go to flatten it, it's gonna come apart. I don't know any other way to keep it together. So I have elected to go ahead and solder this together and this is how I flattened it. So I, I move all the dumbbells to one side and actually, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in for you. Just a second here. So you can see what I'm doing, okay? Take out my little chasing hammer and so notice I'm hanging this off the side because if I put it here, Personally, I run the risk of hammering this entire thing. Not good. So I'm gonna put it out here. 
and I'm going to gently hammer what I can. Okay, and then I'm going to move the rings one at a time to the other side, like so, and hammer the other side. See, it gives this nice, real flat edge, and it's sort of reflective. Can you see that? Yeah, I see it gives a little bit of a reflection there. And I, I just like it. I think it's cool. I, I do like flattened twisted wire. I know. Why do you twist wire to flatten it? Well, because it looks like this. And it's cool. Okay. Then do it again on the other side. Or on the other ring. Okay. You get the point. You get where I'm going with it. Um, do it again a whole bunch of other times. A whole bunch more times because you have a lot of loops. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a small, everybody complains about how small my bracelets are. So you'll probably have eight or nine to get to a seven or an eight, okay? Because mine, my wrist is actually just under a six. So there we are. Okay, so now we're done there. What's left to do? Let's um, patina this, okay? And I do not heat patina on chain, absolutely not. I do prefer to do it with some liver sulfur. So this is some liver sulfur I made up a little bit ago and with warm water, it'll work a lot, lot faster. And I have a, a plastic pair of, of tweezers. Chopsticks work too. Stick it in, roll it around and look at that instant instant if you like it to be darker so leave it in darker make sure you rinse it really well or else your wrist is going to be stinky a lot of people like to do this in their garage because they don't like the smell of rotten eggs in their studio or in their home i'm lucky i'm in the basement so nobody has to smell it but me so Gonna move this around so you can see and then you clean this up with some steel wool and you know what i used steel wool this weekend i never replaced it oops hold on yep i forgot to replace my own steel wool let me go grab it Oh, did you see my bunny slippers? <laughs> Just realized you probably saw that in the camera, huh? Okay. So put that down. You can tumble this. It'll help clean it up a lot quicker and faster. And it'll probably take about 15, 20 minutes. Um, if you did, if you marred all your wire, put it in there a little longer. It'll take a lot of that, that out for you. Yes, I tumbled mine for a couple hours. <laughs> I did a lot of dinging and denting on that thing. Whoops. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you did all copper. All right. Uh, so if you're tumbling, you need stainless steel shot and you need um, Dawn liquid soap is what I like and just a bit of water just to cover. Okay. There it is, we're done. So repeat bunches of times to get to your length and um, that's what the bracelet looks like. All right, anybody have more questions for me? I'm sorry? Oh, I forgot to measure the wire, okay. Oh, I'm grabbing a caliber. Measuring the twisted wire for the question, um, let me grab some, okay, so here, right, so 18 gauge is about 1.08, twisted together, you have double, 2.04, so just about double, um, so again, but if you buy twisted wire, they should be measuring at what it it is like so this would become effectively 
14 gauge, I think. Hold on, let me see what. Uh, probably more like 13 gauge. It's going to be a bit heavier or even 12 gauge because it's two millimeters. So you get where I'm going with that. The uh, question was, how much Dawn do you put into your tumbler? My tumbler takes approximately um, three pounds of shot and I use about three drops of Dawn. I, I don't use a ton of it because part of it, it gets all sudsy and sometimes it comes out of um, uh, it, it comes out of the tumbler because, you know, it's sort of sudsing up. Uh, I see a question here. Can you show us how to make square mandrel or pliers? Oh, how to make a... Okay, sorry, I have a cutoff on mine here. Um, yeah, actually, I did forget to do that. I did say I was going to show you to do that, right? So what you do is... The length of one side of the square is another question. Okay, hold on. I'll tell you. About 11 millimeters. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just put it into a pair of pliers. And you might want to mark where you are so that it's consistently the same. And you just bend it always consistently in the same spot. Then it becomes a square. Right? See how I'm doing that? It's a little smaller than where I want it to go, but. It's not so easy, but it does work. Okay, so then obviously I made it uh, too much of an overlap. Just trim it back. Okay. And there, there's my square. And of course I'll make the adjustments accordingly as I work through to make sure that these come together. Not so perfect, but it works for now. But the key is to consistently be on the same place in your pliers and therefore it's so that the sides are always the same. Another thing that's also helpful too, if you don't have a square pair of pliers or a square mandrel is draw out a square on a piece of paper and measure it as you go, you know, the bends. You bend one, you turn it on the square and you bend it right where uh, the pattern shows you. So uh, there it is, okay? Uh, what else can I tell you? So we have a free Zoom for next week. Do message me directly and let me know if you want to participate. I'll bring it up again uh, in the, the Zoom on Wednesday. And also wine on Wednesday at the bench on when this coming Wednesday at 4.30. If you want to join us, I sent out, um, for everybody who requested, I just sent out an email this morning on um, with the link. If you didn't get it, uh, do reach out to me again directly by messaging on QTalk live and or sorry on QTalk the Facebook page and I will send you a link because we do not post zoom links publicly so that we don't get zoom bombed and spammed but um, hey if you're new here thank you so much for dropping by hope you come back again oh I forgot to show you so this is the um, filigree that is coming up in two weeks that we're pushing the date for okay so I will be posting all the links as soon as I'm done here and shutting this down. So because of the systems that we're on, it doesn't allow us to post the links ahead of time. So we'll come back to the video and post the links, okay? I think that's it. I think I've got all the information out today. I'm pretty happy. Technology worked really well. No one fought me. Let's see if we can do a repeat on Wednesday with the technology and, um, and keep this going. Thanks so much for being here. Go enjoy the weather. I'm going to go run some errands after I send you guys the links, and I will see everyone on Wednesday. Okay. If only my mouse would work. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.